to our attention. Coordination is so important. Coordination, whether, whether in colour, uniformity, what we're doing here tonight. Worshipping the Lord. And I said, to, I said, brothers sing. And I gave the brothers an opportunity. I said, sisters sing. I gave everyone an opportunity. But all of us are under one banner. It shouldn't be hard. Yes. Yes. As the days go by. Yes. Oh, what a love between my daughter and I. I keep falling in love with him. Over and over again. Praise the Lord. Praise our beloved over Smith Scott and all of the wonderful ministers of God in your respective places. In Jesus' wonderful name. Brethren in Christ, children, amen. In the precious name of Jesus. It is good to be in the house of the Lord another time. Praise the name of the Lord, but not just doing the same old, same old, but lifting up Jesus. Because what I am doing now, I haven't done yet. Praise his name, because I haven't seen this time as yet. Praise the Lord. So one writer said it's a new season. It's a new day.
journey be in the day can be long in the day will be short. Amen. Hallelujah. And while we're singing, I've uh, keep falling in love with Jesus. Um, three weeks ago, uh, this coming Friday, I taught and love coaching for marriage at a church. There was a big church, big convention, and I taught on Friday, and it was sort of a young people. But this um, day, while we were talking about some people, I came across um, some poems that were written to my wife many, many years ago. I know married for 27 years. And I read them. And I couldn't believe it, they were written by me because they are love poems. And then I passed it to her. There are two types of love. You have the, the Eros love, which is a popular love. Amen. This moment you love the person, the other moment you don't love the person. That's a that's childish love, popular love. Then you have like filial love. I think I'm speaking Greek. The filial love is the physical love between wife and husband. And then you have the agape love, the divine love. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do we all have the agape love? Yeah. Amen. 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 I, I was preaching the other day. Amen. Maybe it was Sunday, uh, two, two Sundays ago. And I said to them, it was Sunday. If you have the divine love, how when they knock you, how when they suppress you, how when you will be praised, how to our parents. And they that we can see, we can't see 
our heavenly Father. But through his words we can see him. Through his words we know him. And so tonight I'm glad for this regenerated heart. I'm thanking God that he has regenerated my heart. And by his grace and his mercy, I mean to live pleasing him. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name.
Scott, Thank you. our dear bishop, praise the Lord, Thank you. our bishop over there, all the day saints in Christ, ministers, the Lord bless you. What a blessing to be in the house of God.
Thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord.
bid. We have um, been helped by the Spirit of God to lead such an inspired service. And when we are glad to give the Lord, we give Him glory and the Amen. He blesses us. And we thank Him tonight for the spirit of enthusiasm yes. for worshiping God. Amen. And that is the way the Lord wants it to be at all times. When we come into his house. And I'm glad for those who have taken instructions. Those who are cooperating. Cooperating with the moderator means that you're cooperating with God. With the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. The devil he likes um, the spirit of rebellion. You know that is what was found in him. That causes the problem in the world today. Rebellion against God. But we thank God for the unity of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. I thank the Lord for our beloved Pastor Ellington that comes from very far. Very far. I know the introduction has been made already, but I just feel led. I don't do it all the time, but I just feel very much led tonight to say thanks to the Father, Bishop of and his co-workers are here. And you know, uh, may I just say that uh, they have given uh, more attendant support than what the brethren from this assembly has given. I have to say that and I have to say it to you. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. about this before the convention had started and I also have talked with my brethren about it um, but we thank God for everything tonight. Amen. We are not here to please or displease any person. We are here on duty for the Lord. We are here to do what he has appointed us to do through the spirit of regeneration that have regenerated our dead lives. You know what it means to regenerate tissues that are dead? It's being revived, being brought back, new ones being put in. So the dead life that we had because of sin, God has really allowed the Holy Spirit to transform our lives and has given us this opportunity and this joy and gladness wanting to meet together from time to time to worship God the cause of the spirit of regeneration in our lives and we thank God tonight for that. Um, sometimes I, I have been told by folks like you know why don't you have a rest? I'm really tired sometimes but I can't bear to know that the meeting is being held somewhere I don't know. I, I just can't I just can't live with must I must be where service is going on. Because I like to hear people talk about God. Yeah. Because God means a lot to me. Yeah. And there are sometimes I learn some more things about God. Yeah. And I just thank God for the spirit of worship that He has given to me. Yeah. And that is one of the reasons why I like when things being done to glorify God. It makes me sad. When I see that God is not getting any glory out of the congregation, out of His people, it annoys me. And that is why I talk the way I talk sometimes. And because I don't want to upset anybody, I keep quiet. But when the burning starts, you know, I just kind of talk. But I thank the Lord tonight for what the Lord has been bringing out from this subject that we have for the spirit of regeneration. And um, uh, we have been looking on uh, Romans chapter 15 and verse 4, where uh, we see where all the happenings that we have been reading about the encountering with Jesus and uh, Nicodemus, uh, it has been recorded for us to learn something from that particular occasion where they had that discourse. So, as we look into the uh, dialogue and the instructions that Jesus has given to Nicodemus, and what actually 
took place in the life of Christ as a result of him doing what he was authorized by his father to do. We see how we can draw strength from that. Not because you are not loved by God while you're being persecuted. Not because I care about you while you're suffering so much as a child of God. But because he loved you and he's got his eye on you. All that we looked on when Jesus was being um, uh, conspired against, he was being um, uh, criticized, he was being persecuted, he was being undermined. But never in all the prayers that I have been reading about Jesus praying, he had ever brought to the attention of his father, look what they're doing. He has never done that. And many times we go to God and we, we, we beg him for pity. And you know, God has risen us above that level of begging for pity. God wants us to accept, understand what the devil is doing and knowing how to deal with it. And we have been looking on how Jesus dealt with Nicodemus, how he dealt with the Pharisees, how he dealt with the arresting officers, and how he dealt with men who believed and those who did not believe. And he said, well, my time is up. And tonight we're going to be looking on some common things and not doing that Jesus said. Led into something. So we're going to stand now and we're going to pray. We talk about before we have our first meal for the day, second meal, whatever meal we uh, so desire to have. We as Christians we learn to give thanks to the Lord for it. And um, I was listening to uh, Chuck Swindon um, while I was in America. I was listening to him. And he was speaking about uh, praying anywhere you go. The child of God should not be ashamed to pray. And he made a remark about um, sometimes some Christians are ashamed to pray when they go into the restaurants to have their meals. So they will deliberately drop a utensil on the floor, put their head under the floor, and say a little prayer while they're there, pick up the utensil. Hey, let's rise above that. Let's say like the Apostle Paul, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Praise the Lord. So let us learn to uh, face all the criticisms of the world and do what you know your God has commanded you to do. Pray everywhere he said, lift up holy hands. So we're going to pray now for our spiritual meal. Everybody, grace your meal now in Jesus' name. Father, I deeply when I tried to contact three persons or to uh, have all the lessons simplified for the usage and the understanding, deep understanding of everyone. And as I have been getting reports about how helpful study that were engaged and the presentation and I thank the Lord for the skills that they had. Played a great part in whatever I was standing here to do. And after all, the Prime Minister and the President of America, they have what they call their speech writers. And um, they are the spokesperson. So they have written. They have done what I couldn't do. And they try to tell me that I should get to it. But this is one of the things my brother Thompson at the back here, he is quite surprised at the fact that I am not able to do certain things that he promised that he's going to teach me to yes. do it. And I say, I don't want to. And I'll tell you something, there was a time uh, a few years ago, about 1987, um, we had about um, 26 students in this um, place and we had 10 computers at the back and we were teaching them to do um, word processing and um, the uh, stadium they took the RSA exams and uh, some people that came in, they just about could write their names, but we took them on 
for to demonstrate that there are no dull students. The little African now teacher or manager for the project was here and he said, Rocky, there are no dull students. He said, it is the methodology that we do use to teach people. And I have developed that, um, that, that strategy of maneuvering, being able to maneuver in different ways to explain some things. And you know when people are not getting what you're saying, you've got to ensure that they get it. Some people might not be interested. And now uh, while we were here um, with uh, the subjects and um, the uh, lecturer, he said, um, how come you let all these people come here and can do this, they can do that, and you can't? He said, come sit down and let me teach you to do it. I said, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> And uh, a good friend of mine, he said to me, he encouraged me so much and he told me about who he taught. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, that man flew past me and he's teaching me things. And so time and time again, people say they are going to teach me to do computing. And I say, I'm not interested. But one day they are going to challenge me. They're going to get me. Sister Viv said to me the other day, Pastor, you must learn to accept challenge. I may do one day, but I'm not yet ready. <laughs> so you know what this what this is, what this is actually. I am a team person. I like to work with people. And I understand from the scriptures, especially according to Ephesians chapter 4, where the Holy Spirit has deployed the different gifts yeah. to the different members. And I believe that every person should stay within the capacity. Stay where God puts you. Don't override. Don't compete. Just stay and when it is not your time to talk, sit down and listen. When it's not time to walk, sit down or lay down. But let the walkers walk when it is time to walk. So I believe that is how God has structured the church. And he described the church like a human body. And uh, we use different members at different times. When we are asleep, which sleep is a great medicine to every person, every human being. And so when we are asleep, we are resting the members of the body so that they will be functional next day. All right. Not like some people that can't sleep at night. And I know some of them very well. However, so uh, we thank the Lord tonight. For those who have been here since Monday night, um, I don't want to have you bored about um, where we have been coming from, but for those who are here for the very first time on this subject, we have been engaged in the book of um, St. John's Gospel, chapter 3, and we have been talking about the encounter with Jesus and Nicodemus. And we looked on how Jesus was not puffed up about um, people talking about who he is and how a great healer he is and a great teacher he is and so on. He was not concerned about that. And we were trying to encourage, especially the ministers, encourage ourselves to remain humble. It doesn't matter how God blesses you, just remain humble. Um, there are some things that I, 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 I don't interfere with anybody, how oh, you set up your assembly and so on. But you know, I have seen ministers, they would never be comfortable sitting in the congregation. And any time they get a seat on the platform, they are totally relaxed. Um, and yes, I've seen that, and I know some of them very well. But if that makes them happy, that's fine. But what it means, what it means really, what matters where on earth we dwell? Does it sound like the same thing? On the rostrum or in the pulpit? Where Jesus is? He's in the pulpit and he's on the pulpit. So if we can come to the service to come on the pulpit or anywhere you may go to get a seat, stay right where you are. The Lord sees us. Praise the Lord. Alright. I don't want to trouble the ministers too 
that because I hear that I interfere with them too much. Alright, but I don't intend to hurt anybody. I just want to enlighten because the Bible says we should admonish one another. Praise Amen. God. Now, we want to look on uh, the uh, number one. The last day of the feast of the tabernacle, which was a very important feast. St. John chapter 7, 37. And moving away from the uh, uh, encountering that Jesus had with Nicodemus and how Nicodemus went back to report to uh, the Pharisees which he was a member of that um, uh, company we looked on the uh, Sanhedrin council and uh, we came to the conclusion that it was consistent of about 70 persons and it was like the high court of the land. And they would be the ones that deal with the most difficult circumstances in the life of the Israelites. So Nicodemus was a part of that. And the description that was given about him is that he was a Pharisee and he was a rabbi. That means he's a teacher. He was a ruler of the Jews. He was a well-versed person in the law. And so when he went to Jesus, according to the discussion that they had, Jesus asked him a question when Jesus stated something quite simple to him about being born again. He asked, how can these things be? Jesus retorted by saying, are you a ruler in Israel and don't know these things? In other words, what I'm saying to you, there are such simple matters that everybody is supposed to know. But here, if we could translate that particular discussion with the ones that we would have today, we would be surprised to know some simple things that some of us that are up here supposed to know and we don't know. Now, what we are actually trying to do is we look at Romans chapter 15 verse 4 that these things are recorded for our learning. For us to realize the real world in which we are now living. The world in which we are now living, it is the same world that Nicodemus was in the days of Jesus while he was here on earth. But we only have a different generation to deal with. And it is the same nature of man. Always the same behavior, but it is on a wider scale. So we look on the feast of the tabernacle in John chapter 7, 37. And I'm very much going to be in the ill man at you now. I'm going to turn off the light and I'm going to ask you to look at the wall because you will be able to um, uh, identify all the things that we're talking about quite easily. And that is what I was told that this is quite helpful for uh, you will find it sometimes quite self-explanatory. As we go through it together, you will see the mistakes that I'm making. You will also see the misinterpretation that I'm making. I'm prepared for you to come and talk to me about it and tell me what you don't agree with. Okay. Now, in the last day of that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. And if we have another verse in that one place. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, we did talk last night about the word water. And we also bring, brought to your attention on Monday night 
how sometimes we can be very controversial about some simple issues. And there are some folks that are referring this word water to water baptism. But we looked on how the word water here is symbolizing the word of God. Now this is what Jesus has brought if we go back to that scripture. Now we go back to it. Sorry about that. Right. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you should ask yourself the question, reading that, Jesus said, let the man come unto me if any man thirst. Now you are going to expect to go to get some liquid to put in your mouth for it to go down your throat and then in your stomach because you are thirsty. Now if we look on this thirst that Jesus is talking about, it is not thirsty for water, but Jesus has got not water to give everybody that comes, but he's got the word that comes. As he stood on the mountain and he spoke to the thousands of people and he started on the beatitude and the people were coming in large numbers because Jesus was saying something that was bringing total satisfaction to them. They have never heard it like that before. And that is what Jesus said. If any man thirst, let him come unto me. Now, what he was actually saying, you have got the Pharisees around you all the time. And they have not been able to give to you what would satisfy your soul. But if you are hungry, if you are thirsty, come unto me. Because there were those that disbelieved and there were those who believed. And Jesus said, those of you that believe, come unto me. I will give to you. Those that don't believe, they will be condemned. We've got that in our world today. There are a whole lot of people that are born scorn on the word of God. There are a whole lot of people that are coming to church, but they're just in the building. But they're not in fellowship with God. They're not interested in drinking of the water of life. They can never tell you what the sermon is all about because the mind is somewhere else. They are still thirsty. They are hungry. They are destitute. But they will not do what Jesus said. Come unto me. They are searching the scripture. Jesus said, and then you think you are eternal life, but you will not come to me. You have got a Bible, and you're reading it all the time, but you will not come to me so that you can get the value, the virtue, the joy that you're reading. Jesus said, if any man thirsts, this is a universal invitation, not to Nicodemus only, but to whosoever will, praise be to God. Thank God for those that enter into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Sarana said, I came to Jesus and I drank of that life in his stream. My soul was quenched and my soul revived and now I live in him. Are you living in him today?
looked on a number of things. How the Lord Jesus Christ on earth, the step-by-step -step approach, I could see he had a program in front of him. And as the days goes by, as the weeks passes by, as the months roll on, as the year goes on, he got to a certain place and he turned to another page. Now he came to the point. The water of life is to be poured out. But he spoke and he was not playing upon the words. It takes a person that is following carefully the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ to know where he's coming from and where he's going and what his statements mean because the Holy Spirit will help you to understand more if you so desire to know. For the Bible said, and you shall know if your father want to know the Lord. If you follow up, you will get a blessing. And we're not talking about a one-off. We're talking about those who are consistent of following the Lord Jesus Christ anywhere he goes. Because the car of water miss him. You know, we were drawing an illustration last night about the man that was following the Lord Jesus Christ in the crowd. And Jesus was moving so fast that the man was walking behind the Lord. And somebody touched him on his shoulder and he looked around. And by the time he turned around again, he lost sight of Jesus. Don't let nobody touch you on the shoulder. Keep your focus. When you come to worship God, don't worry about who's coming through the door. Sometimes some folks will pass you and disrupt you. And they could want to sit down somewhere else. You're praying. And they feel that they should wake you out of your prayer. And go and get a seat. Amen. Come on now, church. I'm telling you something that we must understand that God must be glorified. Amen. It is not a matter of just coming into the house and behaving in the home. We must understand that the Spirit of God is here. Amen. Because you brought the Spirit of God here, and the Spirit of God tells us that we must reverence Him. Amen. Just imagine somebody's talking to God and you come and interrupt. Stop talk to God. Let me go and sit down. Let me pause. Think about that. When we have got the spirit within us, we will know how to stand at the door at a particular time and wait for the appropriate moment to come in. These are the things that we learn when we commit our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. We can't walk into school any any time in Jamaica. If you turn up at school, let teacher send you back home. Yes. Or punish you. Yes. I wonder if we would begin to impose some of those rules within our churches. I wonder if we can get it done. But you know things have gotten out of hand so long. That the behavior is the norm. Yes. That it becomes offensive if you try to yes. correct it. Yes. But unless it is being corrected, the Spirit of God will not flow. So we got to think about that. Are we prepared for the change, for the transformation, for the regeneration? That old stuff must be gotten rid of. Okay. I'd like to go down to our St. John chapter 17. Be pleased. Now, this is one of the most inspired and touching prayers yes. that have been recorded in the Bible. Amen. Let us look on it carefully. And you can pick up in your minds as to when Jesus made this intercessory prayer. He made this prayer as a high priest because the Bible said he is our high priest. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, 
Now last night we were making an emphasis on how Jesus glorified the Father. And we're going to be seeing some scriptures here where Jesus saying the same thing, I have glorified you. So if Jesus had glorified the Father, it is important that we should glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You're not doing the moderator a favor when you begin to glorify God. The moderator is inspired to lead us into worship. And the moderator begins to glorify God. to do certain things and people just sit down there looking at you like that. <laughs> now, it requires the spirit of regeneration. That is exactly how Nicodemus was behaving. He had all the credentials. He had all the ability to do certain things within the law. But Jesus found it necessary to say to him, you must be born again. You gotta be changed. You can't do it like that. You can't go to God like that. So we gotta look on our attitude when we come into the house of the Lord as to whether we are really regenerated. When we are regenerated, we are flexible, we are instructable, we can be advised, we can be counseled. But you know when we are so stiff up. There are some attitudes. There are some attitudes that deprives us of the blessings of God. And this is exactly what Jesus was doing. He was teaching the people about what had existed that hindered them from having that relationship with God. And he started with Nicodemus. He was very blunt with Nicodemus. I know who you are. I know that you're a father of a man. I know that you've been around a long time. I know the position that you're serving is ready. But I want to tell you something, Nicodemus. I want to tell you something. You've got to be born again. You can't make it like that. And until we are prepared to stand before the Holy Spirit for Him to tell us who we are, he knows that we are good preachers. Yes. He knows that we are good Bible teachers. Yes. He knows that we are serving God a long time. But he wants to say something to us. Yes. You've got to change your attitude. Yes. You've got to change your attitude. about how many times he say Father and how many times we must say Jesus and how many times we must understand that we pray to God through Jesus for Jesus is the door, he is the way, he is the truth and he is the right and he said no man come to the Father but by me. The hour is come. Know this. The time is right. And the time is always right to do what is right. It is important that every one of us, when we hear what God is saying, we should say, God, help me to comply. Thank you. Don't sell it for another meeting. A young man went to Jesus one day and said, Good Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Yes, yes. And after Jesus explained all to him, he got to a point where he said, Sell all that is in that situation, give it to the poor, come, follow me. You know, he paused for a while, he put his head down, he shook his head. The 
This is a hard saying. It is not at all possible that I can do this. Anyway, no now. I'll think about it. And he went away about to say, Oh, he was sorrowful. He was not prepared to do what the Lord Jesus Christ has required of him. And so he went away from the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, a sad man. I wonder if he went back to the Lord and said, Now I'm ready to do what you have commanded me. I have not read in the scriptures where he did that. All that was said about him. He went away sorrowful before he had much money. He was very rich. There are some times that we have some programs. And they are well set out. As human beings, it is our duty to plan our lives. But in all our plans, the word of God says, in all our ways, we must acknowledge God. Never leave God out of all plans. You've got to build a house, you plan with God. What are you going to do? Plan with Him. In all your ways. Give acknowledgement to Him. Now, the hour is come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And I love that. Right. 
He is the author of eternal life. He is the one that will help us to be part of the world that is to come. We don't believe that there's going to be a world. Yes, yes, there's going to be a glorious world. Yes. Number three, please. And this is life eternal. Now, what is life eternal? That they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ who is now ourselves. And thank God because we know him. And the Apostle Paul, he said, that I might know him. I want to know the Lord in this Christ. I want to know about his characteristics. I want to know about his ways. The writer said, more about Jesus, let me learn. More of his holy will deserve. Spirit of God, my teacher, be show the things of Christ. Oh, how nice it is to know the mind of Christ. Know the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, please. Four. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. Now, this is really marvelous. When it is time for us to go, let us go. All right, but this is the point that I'm in. Now, we are talking about a man who has been a leader. He has been an apostle according to Hebrews chapter 4. He is an apostle. Now, he had a specific time scale to work by. You and I want to work until we drop down. He didn't tell us to do that. And all this here now is telling me something that when we are beginning to feel certain vibes, I want you to follow this carefully now. Follow this very, very carefully. There are those of us that God wants us to follow the pattern of working. And while we are working, we must understand that when the body is getting weak, you cannot stand up as long as you're used to when you were a young person. So you must know that you've got to make preparation for the continuation of the work of God. Do you believe in the church of Jesus Christ? Any ministry should go bankrupt? Do you believe that any ministry should run aground? No. Jesus said, I will build my church. And when he builds his church, it goes from strength to strength. It will go from strength to strength if it will be built by the Lord Jesus Christ. But you know, we want to look at this very carefully. I have finished the work which I gave this me to do. Now you take in consideration, Jesus was healing a lot of people. He was doing some marvelous things that the people have never seen done before. But he said, well, I've got to stop now. I have trained the men that thou gavest me. Now let's rush on. We're going to read some very exciting things. And now, oh Father, glorify thou me. With thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world begun. And when we started, the Lord has been with us during our times of difficulty, which Jesus also had. We know that he has been with us. We have come this far by faith, leading on the Lord, trusting in his holy word, he has never failed us. He will never fail us. All right. Now he says that he had a glory with the Father before the world has begun. Okay. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. And now let me say something to you. Let me bring something to your attention tonight. God wants to regenerate our lives. There are some dead attitudes that are among some of us as Christians. The 
don't get very quiet. I'm not touching nobody. I'm preaching the word of God. I want you to follow this because Jesus was very blunt with Nicodemus. Yes. There are some dead attitude among us. I'll show you what it is. Look what Jesus said here. The man which thou gavest me out of the world, they belong to you. None of us as pastors want anybody. No
Can you trust me? Can you trust me to come to your church and teach? Of course you can't trust me. Because you're afraid of me. I have an attitude of being destructive to what you're doing. Now, when we have got the regenerated heart, we will understand that we are one people.
God may provide somebody to pray for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every now and again, somebody, you know, this morning somebody said to me, I called him and they said, well, I thought the person wasn't feeling very well and I had just gotten up out of bed. And the person said, I'm just on my knees praying for you. I didn't make you feel so good. It let me feel like I'm Lord. It let me feel like somebody. Somebody is thinking about me in a wonderful way. Sometimes when I phone some folks, they say, you know, you know, I didn't know, you know. So what y'all say, no? All right. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. The Lord Jesus Christ must be glorified in us. He has paid a price for us. He purchased us with his own blood. If you weren't valuable to him, he would not have bought you. You must understand that nobody can buy you from him because you're priceless. The hear the talk of Mona Lisa? They can't put a price to it. That's who you are. That's what I'm saying. I know I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep them through thy own name, those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. That is what the God Jesus Christ has prayed for. You see, this prayer it is something that is of great significance to us. And every time that we are tempted to be divided, Yeah. 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 You might have been 
try to make anybody stop you from going to heaven when Jesus show you the way to go. Keep going. Let's encourage one another to keep going. Pray be to God. When I hear somebody say to me, this world, the Lord is able. I know that. This is a time when sometimes we kneel down and when somebody can come and say the courageous, that's when they are not afraid. They have confidence. Let me rush on very quickly. I want to bring something very, very deep to your attention. Verse 13, please. And now came I to thee, and these said, I speak in the world. And these said, I speak in the world, that they might have my joy.